Your wealth with prostitutes came back, you celebrate the feast for him with cows and sheep. His father told him, son, you are always here with me and everything I have is yours. But this brother of yours was lost and is now found. He was dead and he has now come back to life. It was necessary that we should rejoice with him. Have you now seen the glory of God? If your father is a wealthy man and does not take you round his estates and riches, how would you know the wealth of your father? He owns death. He owns good health and everything. He has to take us around his vineyard so we can see how beautiful it is. If you hear, your father is very rich, without first seeing his wealth, will you believe? If you are surrounded with wealth you cannot see him. Job said, he heard of God with the ears but now he has seen him face to face. When did he only hear the voice of God? It was, when he was rich, and was not sick. His children and all were intact. That was, when he heard of God with the ears and did not see him. If he did not lose his children and all his wealth, how would he have seen God face to face? Right now you are desirous to see God face to face. If God surrounds you with wealth, children and every good thing, you cannot see him. You can only say these things surrounding you. Unless he takes all these things away from you then and only then, will you be able to see him face to face and converse with him. The reason is, when you are surrounded with money, wealth, and people you will feel, without these things you will die. You do not know anything about God. You regard a house as God. You regard money, wealth and relations as God. No matter how much you are told about God you will not believe. You will think, it is your wealth which has sustained you. But whenever he takes you unawares with incidents like premature birth, when he binds you hands and feet and takes away all your wealth, you turn left and right and there is no soul by you. But, you continue to live and you are still happy. That is, when you see God's face and know, he is the source of everything. God is all and in all. For one to be in affluence and for one to be in lack is the same thing. For one to be sick and for one to be in good health is one and the same thing. There is no difference. The sick man is with God and the healthy man is also with God. But God is all and in all. He is sickness, he is good health, he is poverty, and he is wealth. From time to time he has to show you the different aspects of his person, so you can fully comprehend your father. And when you stand up to speak about him, you can't speak with authority. Somebody who has never been sick is very impatient with a sick man. You are very weak. Why can't you stand up as a man, as he would say to the sick man? He does not know what it is like to be sick. If you have a sick man who has never enjoyed good health, he will not be able to tell you what it is like to enjoy good health, because he has never experienced good health. And so, when you are sick, you have experienced what it is to be sick. When you are in good health you know what it is to be in good health. You have been to these two cities, so that, when you meet a sick man you can give him words of encouragement and that will cheer him up. Let us read the first Bible lesson. First Bible lesson, Romans chapter 5 verse 20. Moreover the law entered, that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. God is aware of every happening. Have you ever had this wisdom? You who lament, things are very difficult with you and death should come and take you away, have you known where sin abounds, grace much more abounds? Do you know this? Do you not know God is responsible for the bad situation? He has seen there is much grace around you, and so he toughens the situation, so that, when you are pressed to the extreme, he may come and shower much more grace onto you. That is, how God sees to the progress of his kingdom, by these ups and downs of life. Many people are saying, God should take away death. If God takes away death, there will be no life as well. If someone does not die, no person is born. If you are not sick you will not be healthy. If you are not poor you will not be rich, and if you are not rich you will never be poor. All these things are one and they do the same work. That is why no matter how you pray or preach, these things continue the way they are. God grows every day and His grace is multiplied every day. Do you not want this grace to abound? When you ask God to take away this or that, it means, you want him to regret. It cannot be so. You have already been told, it is tribulation which brings glory to God. If Adam and Eve did not transgress, how would God come down and live with man? If it is through their offense, God has come down to dwell with man, can you show me what evil there is in that? 
If we examine ourselves we will realize, all the tribulations that come to us bring much more glory to us in the end. You say, the whites did not practice the word of God, if they did practice the word of God, would the word of God reach you? Taking of bribes and after effect. Every offense is committed so grace may abound to many people. Right now there are no job vacancies in the public or private sector. People are no more employed. Millions of applicants are roaming the streets. If a few in the offices do not take bribes or commit one offense or the other, how would they be driven away for others to be employed? He has to collect bribes so he may be sacked in order to create room for another person to be employed. You cannot ask God why he continues to do these things. He is not rubbed in doing these things, because where sin abounds, their grace did much more abound. No person can stand the tribulations which Christ faced. Even today you often hear people say, you should not tempt them, because they are not Jesus Christ. You cannot compare them with him. But who has assumed the glory today? The people of the world say, you should not compare them with our Lord Jesus Christ, because he alone suffered tribulation. That is true. How many of them are glorified today? And so, if you are a child of God be ready to suffer tribulation with Christ. If you suffer with him, you will also be glorified with him. The reverse is the case today. No person wants to suffer tribulation, but you are all waiting for the glory of God. It is quite impossible, because no cross, no crown. It means you want to enter through the window. When you hear, this is the kingdom of God, you start looking for shortcuts into it. There is no short way. It is said, the law entered, that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Romans chapter 5 verse 20. Many people say, there are many laws in brotherhood, which say, do not eat meat, do not eat fish, do not fornicate, do not drink etc. They cannot practice these and they would rather go to the church, where they are free to indulge in these sins. Many people have fallen because of the many laws. They are drinking, fornicating, telling lies and stealing. But it is also here, you find many people who have forsaken drinking, fornication and other sins. Grace has much more abounded. No one believes in the existence of God. No person knows the way of God. That is why, if you go and tell people, God is here on earth, they will tell you to shut up. It was said, when God comes people will no longer be sick, there will be no more deaths, or lack. And he will quote the scriptures to you. He will conclude by saying, the world is still filled with evils and Satan is ruling. If you go and tell the whites, God is in Nigeria, they will ask you why there are still wars and hardship in the country. If you tell a fellow Nigerian, God is here, he will tell you to shut up. Because, if God were here, people will not be sick, or be in lack, or die anymore. It is said, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Have you not seen the abundance of grace here? Whenever you want to rejoice in this kingdom an outsider will come and tell you, it is Beelzebub and that we drink blood. Your joy will consequently be dampened. You should not advise God. Paul said, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7. If it were not for these thorns now and then, many of you would become insane because of joy. This joy is so great you cannot contain it. God has to put in these small thorns, as messengers to keep you from being overjoyous. When you are rejoicing somebody will come and tell you, now you are dancing but your brother is very sick. Your joy will be taken away. You will begin to ask, if this is the kingdom of God why should my brother be sick, especially, as I have surrendered myself unto God. There are all kinds of temptations, even in farming, you have studied farming so well you will become a real successful farmer. But during harvest, your yams are all dead. The gain in your business cannot offset this loss. This is done by God. You send out two people with articles of trade thinking, there will be much profit with two people sent out. God is watching you. Be assured, one of them will come back with profit and the other with a loss. This happens so you may still remain between joy and sorrow. Do not serve God for any ulterior motive. Brethren do not disturb yourself again. Do not ask questions about any situation or event. Everything is at the instance of God. There is no Satan, no mistake nor any evil power responsible for anything. The grace of God is sufficient unto us. 
Whether you pray or not, whether you know God or not, it is the same. Do not seek to know God, or to please Him and serve Him for any ulterior motive.